Hi and welcome back to this video tutorial series on tracking, keying and compositing. Uh, in our last video we just left off. We just set up our background scene. We'd, put, we'd got our, our plane and we'd stuck a monkey on the floor for a placeholder so that we could see in our scene where our girl was standing. And it's all very... Uh, it's all good. We also got this collection of nodes in our compositing window and mostly these nodes are designed for adding a 3D element into a movie clip background which is ideal for that kind of thing but what we're doing is adding a movie clip into a 3D background basically we're working opposite to what these nodes have given us so for the most part we don't need these extra nodes and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the nodes properly for what we need and we're going to set up a little scene maybe do a little bit of, of texturing and modeling uh, nothing too heavy if you've seen the little video that I did as a test render you'll already know what's happening or where we're heading but here's a quick look just to show you the final version okay so that's pretty cool that's what we're aiming for so let's get started first thing we need to do is clear up our compositing window of all the uh, nonsense that we have so we already have our image movie clip set up with its uh, keying and everything so we don't need the additional movie clip that Blender's given us so I'm just going to select that press shift and select everything that's connected to it so that'll be the undistortion, the scale and this multiply node we also we also have these uh, two render layers nodes which we need but we don't need all the additional things added to them so if I just press down shift again and select each of these and we also don't need the additional composite node nor do we need the viewer node so I'll just select all those and then we can just press X and delete them so now we're left with our original setup we have our image node for our young lady our actress our scale node keying all the colour amp and blur and everything to, for, to get the nice cutout that we have uh, this image node we no longer need nor do we need the scale node because our render layers are automatically uh, scaled to the uh, camera size so we can select those and delete them as well so now she should appear on a white background yes there she goes okay so now what we need to do is put in our background scene and we do that by choosing the node that says background in the back and we simply need to connect the image to the top of the mix node that we had originally and now you see that we get a plain black background which is not what we actually need we want the rendered view so if we go back to our window uh, control and up arrow again it brings us back to our main screen and if we look through our camera we can let's make this window our main window for the moment you can see we have two uh, two layers selected that's our foreground and background layers and we need to separate the items that are going behind our character such as this cube and 
everything she's standing on which will be this background plane and eventually we'll have some walls in there so they'll need to all be on the background so if I go to uh, my side window and if we look along this top uh, tab bar and we choose the scene tab you'll see we have two render layers selected we have a background layer and the background layer is everything on this bottom layer here oops didn't mean to zoom out so everything on the background is if we just select it and zoom in you'll see we have the monkey and the background plane now we don't want the monkey on the background because that's going to be in front of our character so if we select the monkey press M and move it to the top layer if we click on the foreground you'll see the foreground is everything on layer 1 so if we just choose layer 1 we now have the monkey and the cube on layer 1 and we don't want the cube in the foreground we want the cube in the background so we select the cube press M and move it to the background layer okay so now everything's set up let's go to our render um, panels and if we just hit the render button you'll see our scene starts building if we can just zoom out a little bit you see we've got our monkey rendered and it's just working away slowly and I've done that slightly wrong because we need to have all the layers selected to render and at the moment we have only the top layer selected so if I press shift and select the background layer as well so now both layers are selected I press render again just let that work through you can see now the background is coming through and it's in the foreground give that a moment just to do its thing okay there we go now we have uh, we have our background and our girl is standing nicely on the floor you can see the shadows of the monkey is there and the shadows of the cube and the cube is in place and everything looks lovely now you'll notice the monkey isn't showing up that's because we haven't connected that layer yet so we have for our foreground layer um, the, the foreground and we have a vector blur and it's connected to this alpha over so let's go full screen on our compositing window again shift select these three nodes and we can just bring them and we'll put them just up at the top here so if we grab just drag them up that's it let's tidy this up okay so now let's just explain how this is set up quickly we have our main scene with our film footage of our character and she's in the middle layer we have our render layer which goes behind everything and it is mixed in the top socket of the mix node sure why they've done it that way oh dear just come along viewer node do what you're supposed to do there we go I'll just move that back again okay so with uh, with that in mind with the render layers being on the top and the image on the bottom socket of our mix node we can now use that to understand where to put our foreground render layers 
if we bring in this alpha over and you can see it's already plugged into the bottom image socket of our alpha over node and we're not using a mixed node on this section we could but it would go slightly different let's just uh, show you the difference here if I drop that into the top socket there if I bring our background layer and drop it in to the bottom layer where it should be. There, okay, so with a mixed node, all the background images are going into the bottom image and our monkey is just showing its slight outline, which isn't what we need. Uh, if we put it in properly, into a mixed node. Let it just uh, calculate that quickly. You see we just get the monkey instead of both uh, instead of having the monkey overlaid over our scene. So we need to use the alpha over node. So if I uh, delete that bring our foreground layers into the bottom our background layers into the top exactly the same as this this is all background layer compared to uh, our foreground layer now if we plug the alpha over node into our viewer it should work there we go now you'll see there's a little cut behind our young lady and that's because this background is an alpha and the edges are interfering with everything which is fine that will be fixed as soon as we put a proper background into our scene but for now that's our setup done and we can begin going in and just simply modeling and importing the things that we need. So let's go on and we'll do that. Control up arrow just to bring our window back to normal. Now everything we need is going to be on our background layer to start with. And we're going to use this uh, plane. If I make this full screen. I'm going to use this plane to create a space for our model to stand in and we're going to uh, go into edit mode so just control tab go to edge select we'll take this back edge and press GY take it right back over there take this edge here GX and we'll move it over to about there. We don't need oh dear. Right, just go press seven, select this edge. We don't need all this extra floor space over here, so if I press GX and just bring it in to about there. Let's have a look at that through our camera. Yep, we can see we'll have a wall a back wall and a side wall which is fine select the select the edges by pressing alt uh, no we don't need to press shift and just select the edges press e z drag them up that's fairly reasonable 3 meters 3 blender units high it's fairly reasonable ok and if we press F that puts a roof on top of our room now if we press Alt A you'll see she's in a nice contained area our tracking markers look as if they're still connected to the room I know they're not really 
they could be. It's all quite fun. Anyway, enough go for nonsense. Uh, Alt A, it's looking good, it's looking fine to me. Let's add some doors and things. So let's come out of camera view for the moment. And you can see we've just got a box that's pretty dull. So I'm going to press Control R. Put two edge cuts in there. And I can slide those into position. So if I put them about there, press S, X to scale those two together on the X axis. Let's check my camera view. Yeah, it's a little over a meter wide, which is good. It's wide enough to walk through. So we can call that our door space. And if we do the same here, control R, oops, too many, and I scroll up with my mouse to get two cuts, sit them about there, Alt, no, just S, oh dear, S, Y, hold it on the Y axis, bring it together, Move it about there. Okay. Now we need to make them door sized. So if I go through my camera again. And if I just pop back into object mode. You'll see I have something on layer 3. And you can see I've got a little swap guy here. Now very handy. And he's scaled down to the same size as our character. So we've got a good match. If I press shift select. Uh, where is... ah. Now if I uh, box select all this guy. And just move him. Oops, I'm moving the room as well. Control Z. I don't want the room selected. So if I just C. De deselect that. Go back to my camera. And I can move this guy into the background. Ah, he's gone through the wall. And we can use him to get a reasonable scale of our doorway. Because he's in a good position and we know he's the right size for a human. According to this scene. So let's reselect our room. Tab into edit mode, and if I press Ctrl R, get a loop cut there. Now I can drag it up. Okay. Now looking at our guy, we can see that this uh, doorway is a little bit too wide. So if I press Alt select this this loop and alt shift and select this loop sx just bring them together a little bit that's better that's a nicer size I'll just drag them to the side a little bit that's good okay now let's put these doors in so if I go to face select mode uh, control tab, choose face select, right click that one, right click that one, press E, right select to deselect, Alt S to scale along the normals, and we will pull those doors out to make recesses. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we've got some doorways. We've got our room, ceiling and floor. So now all we need to do is texture them. And I've kept it simple and low poly for rendering times. But that's by the by. First off we need some textures. So let's close down, not close down. 
Uh, actually, let's save everything by going to save as and ah there we go right save as and you'll see we're on iteration 13 now because uh, I've been working on it previously right we need we need some textures basically so if I go and minimize that and open GIMP okay now that's open we need a texture and I get I'm getting a texture from cgtextures.com and I'm just going for something really basic in the um, bare concrete section Just have a look through here. It doesn't have to be brilliant. This set tile huge looks good enough. Um, let's log in quickly. And it's already downloaded that one for us. So now back to GIMP. And we file, oops, file open. Downloads Concrete Bear, there we go. Open that. And we've got a fairly basic concretey kind of texture, which probably isn't that great, but it'll do. So I'm going to cut out a nice square patch. Lovely. Um and now I'm going to normalize it. First, let's save it. We'll export it to our Blender files, tutorials, VFX, textures, where? And now what we can do is go to filters and I've and it's the insane bump and this works in a very similar way to the crazy bump plugin for Photoshop except it's free and you can find it by simply googling insane bump and there are two versions there is a GIMP plugin and there is a standalone version that actually gives you a 3D preview but as I'm going to be using it in Blender and I can adjust the settings within Blender I don't really need to have a preview I can just tell it to use the default settings and it'll do its thing and it's creating all sorts of weird images and pictures Hopefully it's not going to make a complete disaster of it. I think it's actually trying to tile the image as well. We shall see how we do. But what it's also done is Oh dear, where is it? But what it's also done is it's created lots and lots of specular maps, ambient occlusion maps, different scales of uh, normal maps, and it's created a... I have no idea what kind of a map that is. It's the weird yellow and green and red normal map type thing. 
no clue, no clue at all. Anyway, it's automatically saved those. It's done its thing, so we can close that. And you can see it's given us this weird horrific thing, but that's okay. We won't be using that. Just uh, close down GIMP now and go back to Blender. And we just need to select our floor. Let's go through, select all the uh, all the faces of the floor. And if I press seven on my number pad, so we're looking straight on. Control up arrow. If we go to our default window, okay. If we go to our default window, split that in half. Close down the toolbars and change that to a UV image editor. And if we go to image, open image, textures. And I want my diffuse texture for the concrete, concrete bare 028, open image. Now if I press 7 on my number pad in my window and press U, unwrap, project from view, bounds, you'll see our concrete image is now UV'd nicely. And in order to see it, I'm in textured view, but it's not showing up. So let's have a look in object mode. Press N on my number pad and under shading. We have GLSL selected. So why am I not seeing a texture on my model? Grab a lamp. G. Hmm. Okay. So for some reason that's not showing up. But that's okay if I uh, select my model again and we add it as a texture. So I'm going to use Blender internal renderer because why not? Now I'm in the textures panel so I just press new. Change from clouds to image or movie. And we've already opened it. So if I click on the little icon and scroll down, we have all the textures that we imported with our little guy. But there's our concrete there. Now you can see the texture is showing up. If I go change the mapping from generated to UV, that looks a lot better, but it's far too big. So if we go back to edit mode, and in our UV panel, select everything by pressing, hovering over and pressing L. That selects the whole island. And now if we press S, we can scale it up. And that's looking a little bit better, but we can go a bit further. Yeah, that looks fine. Okay, that's that floor done. Now if I go to my materials, it's a bit too sparkly with that, so I'll turn down the specular. We don't need any of these other shading options because it's only a floor. But we now need to use those bump maps and normal maps, so back in the Textured panel. I'm going to select a new texture, choose new, image or movie, and now I'm going to open and we want concrete bare normal map. I think if we choose this one because it's given us a high detail and a low detail. It's also given us uh, a more intense kind of bump map. Let's start with this one. And we just need to set it up as before. Except under image sampling we need to tell it to use the normal map. 
under mapping we want it to be UVs we want to turn off the colour and turn on the geometry and now looking through we can see that our normal map is starting to affect the floor we can increase the strength of that a little bit not too much that's crazy put it to two and now we will add another texture and we'll use the other type of normal map just to give a bit more um, texture to it oops that's the wrong thing image or movie open textures thumbnails choose that one open image tell it to use a normal map tell it to use the UVs not the colour geometry please and there we go let's have a look at that through our camera you can see it's a little bit rough so we'll turn it down to 0.3 or negative no we want 0.3 yeah that looks okay let's have a look at our other normal map might be a bit too strong we'll reduce that to point 0.3 as well okay so that's the uh, floor and if we uh, just add one final texture new image or movie open textures thumbnails and that one I think concrete pair S I think that's speculars that's the one we want so open image change to UV color off and this time we'll click specular and you'll see we've got this really quite gross looking look so we'll reduce that down poke it down to about 0.3 as well so now if we have a look it's looking a little bit waxy so we'll reduce it down quite a bit more 0 0.1 0 0.8 0 0.02 is a bit too far down change that to 0 0.05 okay that's better <clears throat> okay so that's our floor done and we'll do exactly the same for the uh, walls and ceiling if I select actually let's put some seams on the corners of the door frame uh, control tab edge select grab there grab there going round on each of the corners and do it on the back door as well all right lovely and now if we control uh, press T and we choose the shading UVs tab and click mark seam now when we cut all these panels out it'll UV properly for us so if I control tab and choose faces and we just start going through and select all four walls as well as these door edges leave that one because that's the floor and 
and we should now be able to unwrap that but first let's import our walls textures image open image textures bricks and these again are from CG textures that I've normal mapped using the insane bump plugin for GIMP let's open that press U unwrap and you'll see it's given us a nice unwrapped uh, image there but it's far too small and it's probably upside down yes because this door is on the opposite side so if we press L to select everything S X negative one and that just flips our UVs round and now if we do the same to our wall as we did with our floor we'll add in the two normal maps and a specular map as well as our diffuse first we need to go to materials click the plus button to create a new material slot and then click the new material button take the specular all the way down we don't need it for this and go to our materials new material image or movie and we'll choose our wall textures brick large painted and we'll go back to our material settings and because we have our walls selected already we just press assign and now we can see our bricks through the uh, in the viewport alright let's go back to our materials settings mapping change from generated to UV now there we go now we can scale them up to a proper reasonable size in our UV editor so I'll just have with everything selected press S and start scaling it up until it looks in the viewport like genuine brick sized bricks okay that looks about right alright we're almost there let's, uh, let's add our normal maps quickly in exactly the same way image or movie open image, textures, thumbnails brick normal maps scroll down image mapping, image sampling rather check normal map geometry turn off colour it's a little bit strong so let's put that at point 0.3 last one specular map we don't need to put in ambient occlusion maps and things it's not needed in this it's a simple enough scene so image or movie open textures thumbnails uh, SA I think that's the ambient occlusion map SS uh, specular I believe that's the one open image I could be thoroughly wrong I could be putting the wrong textures in but hey whatever it's working change the map into UVs don't need to do anything on sampling turn off color check specular look through our camera view yeah it's all looking good we'll just drag that down quite a bit point 0.1 Let's have a look in our preview window, check both, that looks okay, looks okay. Okay, so now the last thing we need to do is the doors, and they're just a simple image. So select one, select the other, press U, unwrap, we have two doors, one is wider than the other. This one I've deliberately made wider so that we can have slightly more of our background uh, image, open image, textures 
door.jpg select that one L G let's move it over the door scale it up a little bit so we've got more of the door just drag that down from the door that's the opposite scale it up a little bit Ooh, might be a bit much alright so we're going to need a new texture for our doors click the new button new assign this one to the doors and you'll see they've gone blank go to our textures new image or movie and from the image list a b c door dot jpeg and there we go Let's scroll down mapping generated to uvs and there's our door now it looks a little bit stupid there whoops that door looks okay Just G, drag it up. Scale it slightly. And we've got a nice little window effect at the top. It'd be nice if we could get the whole window thing in that would mean putting in an extra loop and we don't need to do that it's only a simple thing uh, the other door I want to make it slightly bigger scale it in on the x-axis a bit Scale it down so it's kind of door sized. Let's grab these bottom two G, uh, G, Y. Okay, so now we've got all our doors, our textures are all happy. Right, let's go back to our compositing view and if I plug our alpha over into our final render you'll see we still have the uh, cube and things if I hit the re-render button let that do its thing you'll see we're starting to get our floor it's pretty quick still there we go now our young lady's in a nice room and where's the monkey where's the monkey yeah typical our oh, monkey's not around let's tell it to render the monkey quickly by pressing the little icon on the foreground button there we go okay so now we need to bring some lights into our scene take our lamp bring it in if we look through our camera again at our young lady we can see the shadows are kind of going off backwards she doesn't really have that much shadow so they need to be pretty soft So if we bring the lamp to the front, about here, and bring it in about here, okay, that's good, should brighten up the scene nicely, and if we go to our lamp settings, change the soft size 
to 2, I think. Samples to 10. Change the darkness up ever so slightly. And change it from adaptive to a constant. It'll take a little bit longer to run. And if we change the energy down from 1 to 0.75, take a quarter off. And let's start bringing in our background scenes. And this guy is uh, this is a model from BlendSWAT. It's a SWAT team member. I've taken off the laser for this one. Um, it's reasonably well. Well, it's got an armature on it. Rigging's not brilliant, but it's uh, it's adequate for what we need. Uh, it's made by Chaiwick Jeruni, pretty good model, and you can obviously use anything that fits your imagination. There's uh, a whole nearly two thousand different models that you can find on blend swap characters to add to your scene, as well as the almost half million other models that might be there. You might want a Ford Transit in your scene, or some rope, <laughs> or you might want a complete kitchen. Stick the young lady in the kitchen, why not? Um, Alright, so that, that's Blend Swap, where you can get stuff from to add to your scenes. Uh, I've taken a Swap Team guy, and he's on layer 3. So I need to select him and all his attributes. I'll just box select him. And I want to put him on the background layer, which is the bottom this one here, so M, move him there, now he's in our scene, and you can rig this guy however you need, uh, animating, you can animate him to move in the scene, I'm just going to pause him quickly, uh, grab your gun sunshine, ah, Damn it. Troll with this guy is the rig isn't particularly brilliant. It's not the most amazing pausing job this time. You need to take a lot more care with it than I'm currently doing. Oh crap. I selected the wrong thing. Oh, what kind of gun holding is that? Okay. Now we need to come out of pause mode. And into object mode, otherwise when we try and move him Blender will crash. So before you put him in position, Control S save your work. Now box select him. Throat sounding really dry now. This isn't good. Zero. Let's move him into position, rotate him around a bit so he's looking at our girl. Alt H the room. And then it's just a simple case of uh, duplicating him by pressing Shift D. And move him around.
these are low poly enough that you can put quite a few in the scene. Now this guy is going to be in front of our young lady. For quite a substantial amount of time. So we need to move him to layer one. And now they could all be much better posed. I should have uh, could obviously have made much more of an effort with this uh, posing malarkey. Ah, come on, pause mode. Oh well, that'll do. So let's give that a quick test. Yeah, it's looking a lot better now we've got that lamp in there. We've got our shadows back on the floor. That's good. That means our monkey's going to look like it's not just stuck on. Alright, so that's rendered out nicely, and we can see our scene is looking pretty good. Um, now you can delete the monkey and the cube if you want, uh, add in some additional uh, features of interest. Um, Pretty much, looking at it, that's all we need for this uh, this scene. Our young lady is uh, sat quite nicely in this room full of men with guns. And we could render that out. So, we just need to... Uh, check our render settings. We have a temporary uh, output to our temp file set as PNG images anti-aliasing is on we're 100% render so all we need to do is click the render animation button and make sure that your composite node is connected to your final alpha over node and not just the viewer otherwise it won't render and you'll wonder why um, that's just about everything yep you can do a little bit of color correcting if you feel you need to I don't think this scene needs it so much it's pretty good as it is. Yep, so just hit that animation button and you'll finish up. I already did that, we just rendered all our scenes out. There we go, render, 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 render. And took about 20 hours <laughs> near enough but once you've done now we can turn it into an actual uh, video sequence so click on the down button go to video editing 
go back to the first frame add image go to your temp file and select everything with everything selected just click add image strip now your entire sequence you'll see um, this is my previous sequence that I put on YouTube I've got all my guys posed in the background I didn't put any in the foreground on this one but if we just play through it slowly and my wall bricks are a little bit larger and I've got a different floor texture so it's not exactly the same scene and it's slowly running through going at one frame per second which is not great but anyway you get the idea now if we just switch to our properties panel click on the PNG change it to our movie choice whichever one is more suitable for you I generally choose H264 uh, there's no sound so we don't need to do any encoding it's programmed to our TMP file uh, okay so all it needs doing now is you hit the animation button and that will render out the sequence back to your TMP file as a H264 or whatever you chose strip and it will bring out the movie clip I'll just open that up in a player yep there you go our little girl is on the floor nicely pinned in the 3D world you can see what I mean about those glitches with the vector blur that's why I didn't put them in this time it would have helped if I'd used If I'd subdivided the thing a bit more, the uh, room. But that would have taken a lot longer to render. And you can see our girl matches in with the background, in with the scene, everything looks really good. And you're all good to go. So, yes, that's it. Do your thing. Show us your results, post them on Facebook and Twitter and things and if you do anything really special we'll put it on our featured front page. Of course we're good like that. Okay, so that's it. Until next time I will see you later.